Hello there, this is Ruben Pradhan and uh, I'm here at this lovely tea garden called uh, New Chamta Tea Estate and uh, I would just like to share with you about the 25th April 2015. Well, there are many stories surrounding the event or rather the natural calamity that happened on this date and uh, so today being the 25th April it's exactly five years that uh, this uh, a tragedy had struck the beautiful land of Nepal. And I was there with my family at that time. And uh, we were actually, uh, we had been in Nepal for about five years. And uh, it was time for us to return back to India. And the church was going to give us a far farewell service. And... Uh, so my family, they had uh, uh, spoken that bit to the church, thanking them and, uh, you know, bidding farewell in a formal way and uh, being prayed for us as a family. And then I was, uh, it was my turn to uh, share, you know, uh, basically a farewell speech uh, combined with the sermon that I was supposed to preach that Sunday. It was probably around 11 in the morning and I was, uh, in, I was uh, about five minutes into my speech when uh, we felt this big tremor. And uh, you see, because I am originally from Shillong and I'm used to, uh, you know, the earthquake, the tremor. Almost every year we, we used to experience this in uh, Shillong and uh, sometimes small tremor, sometimes big one, but nothing devastating took place. And uh, so I thought it was, it would be one of those, you know, uh, tremor that I, I, I had always experienced in my life. And so I just tried to calm, the, uh, calm down the church because they were a little panicky. I said, calm down, it's, it's going to stop. But then as I said that, the tremor was so intense, it began to grow more and more. And I could see the the building, I, I, I could see the windows and the doors right in front opposite to me because I was on the stage on the pulpit and I could see the windows and the doors, you know, moving in this manner. And then I said, oh, oh, this is not any ordinary or the usual earthquake that I have experienced in my life so far. And then uh, the whole building was shaking and uh, people began to panic and they began to uh, stand up from their seats and and they began to dart towards towards the door but as we began to move towards the door I remember calling out to Daniel our youngest uh, child son he was at that time just six years of age and I quickly grabbed his hand I threw the mic on the floor and then we wanted to rush out to the door but as we did that we would fall on one side. We wouldn't be able to stand and walk or run, you know. The building was shaking in such a way, you, f you felt that the ground was moving away from your feet. And we would, we would uh, stand up again to try to run. Again, we would fall onto the other side. Somehow we reached the door. And uh, so somebody had, you know, in that uh, situation, in that chaos, somebody had kicked a chair and then it, it had blocked the doorway and then the people fell on that chair and the whole thing got blocked and then somehow we moved the chair out of that place and then we rushed out outside of the building and uh, the tremor went on you know the whole ground that we were sitting there and uh, we were just spraying the whole ground was shaking it was a terrible experience um, after every six uh, 30 seconds or uh, a minute or um, two minutes the earthquake would come again and again people children and uh, the women folk the girls they were screaming they were crying and uh, some of us leaders there we are trying to console and pacify the people with praying for them reading scriptures and doing that but uh, yes as I said there uh, there are lots of uh, stories that surround this uh, earthquake and uh, but I would just like to share one small uh, incident uh, and even that unfolded uh, during this earthquake and uh, which uh, spoke uh, to my life about the value of life and I hope it will uh, speak to you as well. It was dangerous 
uh, for people, any people, uh, to be inside the building. And uh, so we decided to sleep outside the building. And uh, there was a little uh, space between our building and our gate. So we slept outside that night. But the next day, um, we had to come up with some idea to build a temporary tent. And uh, I have had no experience of uh, building a tent. And so what happened was, uh, I, I, I saw people on the road outside our building, you know, um, uh, rushing to get uh, tarpaulins, tents, whatever they could, uh, some materials to make a make, uh, makeshift uh, shelter, you know. and. Uh, I remember a dear brother, he, I had no vehicles and I didn't know where to go, where to look for. And a dear brother who uh, lived a little further away from our house was passing by our house and then he asked me if we had a tent. I said no and he helped us to get one. And then we set up the tent uh, outside the ground, not inside our building, not inside the compound, but uh, next to our building was a, uh, was a, a an empty field. Uh, belong to some people and uh, of course now buildings have come up in that field but it was at that time empty and so I saw some people trying to set up uh, some tents over there some camps over there and uh, and I did uh, we did ours also we went and uh, somehow and none of us had I an idea how to uh, build a tent you know we uh, did something with it and uh, 11 of us in that tent we were that night we had to squeeze it inside and uh, from one edge to the other edge we, we, we had uh, filled that uh, space inside the tent and uh, it was raining also and uh, we could go we could get some you know splatter of, uh, of the rain getting inside our tent and um, so uh, my wife had brought all her uh, you know cooking wares stove and utensils outside the building outside our house she cooked outside and then we ate our food outside and we went to sleep in that tent and uh, that night I remember very well um, probably it was into the middle of the night when uh, and we were most of us were asleep and uh, squeezed up in that small tent and uh, we heard a, uh, a lady outside our uh, tent and uh, so we just lifted up the curtain of the tent and she said uh, she, she was basically asking uh, for a shelter in our tent she had a little baby with her uh, probably about a month old and uh, she lived in a nearby building opposite to our house and uh, they had a very big building and she said that she basically was requesting us if we would give us a little space so that she and her little baby could sleep there and uh, we had seen that her husband had taken his uh, their car outside and uh, basically people were sleeping inside their cars but somehow probably she and the little baby couldn't sleep inside the car and in the middle of the night she came to us asked for shelter she said can we and we were already squished up you know jammed in that um, jam packed in that little tent and she said, can I get a little space for me and my little baby here just for tonight? We somehow made room for her and she slept on one side along with the other ladies, my wife and the daughters. And uh, But that night as uh, I went to sleep, you know, I, uh, I began to reflect upon the value of life. Here is a woman with a little baby and she belongs you know to a to a good family well-to-do family affluent family and i assume that they must have invested their lifetime of earning in constructing that building but here here's this lady with a little baby scared that the build that that very building might kill her and the little baby and she was asking for a shelter in that little tent. People who made houses, constructed big, huge buildings on that day were running away from those very buildings, from those very houses for which they had invested their lifetime of 
of their income. What is the value of life when you come face to face with death? You will find that the wealth of this world pales to nothing when you come face to face with death. All that you require at that time, all that you want to do at, the, at that time is to save your life. So my dear friends, do not underestimate the value of your life. Your life is very precious. And that is why God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, to save you from your sins and to give you a new life. So that you would know who you are, your worth, in his sight because we are all the Bible says made in the image of God so don't waste away your life count it precious and make the best use of it God bless you thank you